Hey everyone, this is Maria from Four Season Foraging, and I'm just here at the community garden that I help manage in North Minneapolis, and I thought I would just do a quick live stream about some of the common edible weeds that you can find in places like this, so community gardens, yards, parks, boulevards, those kind of places. Um, so when I uh, tell people to forage in the city in urban areas, I'm a big proponent of urban foraging, by the way, in case you didn't know that already. And I, uh, one of my recommended places to forage is in community gardens. And you do, of course, want to do it with the permission of whoever manages the plot or whoever is leasing the spot. Um, and that's, <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> so the way most community gardens are managed is that there'll be like little plots and an individual or a family or whatever can lease a plot for the growing season for a certain dollar amount. There are some community gardens like this one here that's open to the community and it's more communal um, or there might be community gardens that are kind of half and half, like there's some that are some areas in the community garden that are rented out to individuals and other areas that are communal and that anyone from the neighborhood can come pick from. So, uh, hey, Parker, <laughs> how's it going? Hope you're holding up okay. Um, yeah, stuff's crazy in the world, but here I am in North Minneapolis. Hey Helen, hope you're doing good. Um, yeah, I hope you all stayed safe last night. Um, but yeah, I'm over here to talk about some stuff you can find growing. Good, good in Decora, good. Yeah, are there protests going on down there too? <laughs> Hi Helen. Um, yeah, over where I am, I'm just gonna flip this camera around. Oh, can I? Oh yeah, I can. But, I don't know how well you can see that, but the auto parts store here across the street is like completely burned down. Kinda looks like a bomb went off in there. But the garden here is totally fine and it's actually cleaner than usual because people from the community and volunteers have been coming to uh, clean up the mess. So it's actually looking really good here and definitely appreciate that it wasn't trampled or burned down or anything. Got a protest planned for later today. That's good. I hope it goes well. Hope people stay safe. I know the cops have been wild in a lot of places, including here. So. Um, yeah, I hope you're hope you're staying safe and keeping your spirits up. But um, yeah, I just wanted to show you some of the common plants around here. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention about community gardens is that they're often good places to pick because the soil should have been tested. So at this community garden here, we have all these raised beds because the soil is actually contaminated. I think, if I remember correctly, it's arsenic that's in the soil. So I wouldn't pick anything that's growing directly out of the soil, but there's a ton of weeds that grow in the beds. So like, over here, and I intentionally let weeds grow a lot of the time because uh, I like to eat them. <laughs> and over here we have a little row of black nightshade. Um, i trying to remember the Latin name. I think it's Solanum nigrum. And the greens of these are edible, but they do require a bit of caution. Like you want to get them when they're young. And I can't remember all the things you're supposed to do now. Like I think you want to avoid the ones that are more reddish in color. So like these are, some are more reddish than others. If you look on the underside here. But basically there's uh, alkaloid that's in the leaves, but it's an 
and alkaloids are like typically dangerous and toxic, but it's in, <clears throat> excuse me, it's in small enough concentrations that it won't hurt you if you eat it cooked, but some of the leaves have more alkaloids than others and you can kind of tell by the way they look. So not necessarily something for beginning foragers. Hi Dan, you doing good? Holding up okay? Hello, found with joined. Hope everyone's staying safe here in Minneapolis on the north side, just at the community garden pointing out some plants. So yeah, these here are black nightshade and they're gonna, I'm gonna let them grow into big plants with delicious berries. Hi, Christina. Um, so come summer, like maybe a month or so from now, these will get probably pretty massive uh, since it's growing in good soil and it's on compost. They can get really big. Like last year, I had a plant growing here and it got maybe like, I don't know, maybe two feet tall or something. <laughs> Usually when I see them, they're growing like in cracks in the sidewalk and they get like six inches tall. But since this is like nice rich soil, they got really big. Um, so yeah, this is a black nightshade and it's often thought to be poisonous, but it's actually not. And there's lots of plants in the nightshade family, like tomatoes, for example, which we have growing here. And peppers, which are over here, and eggplant, which we have over back there. Um, so there's lots of edible plants in the nightshade family. So just because it's a nightshade doesn't mean it's poisonous, but you do want to make sure to get the right thing because there is... Oh, it just paused because of a bad connection. I hope people can hear me okay. Uh, I'm just trying out Instagram Live for the first time to see how well it works for like potentially doing live um, online workshops so just want to make sure that like the connection is good enough yep you can hear me good good so yeah these here are gonna grow into beautiful tall plants with like tiny little black they're almost black they're like a dark purple or dark blue berries on them and the berries basically taste like really really sweet cherry tomatoes um, sometimes they're sweeter than others I have a friend who swears that they taste like fruity pebbles I would not personally go that far but um, you know <laughs> to each their own <laughs> if that's what it tastes like to you cool um, so oh yeah I was saying there's a poisonous alkali called Atropa belladonna but it's not very common in the US so it's not a huge concern, but it is something you should know about. So definitely look that up and make sure you have the right thing when you're trying to eat black nightshade. Hi, Carrie. How are you doing? Hope everyone's doing well in these times. I'm just here at the garden that I help manage and I want to show some weeds that commonly grow in gardens. Hey, cat. <laughs> fruity pebbles <laughs> yeah it's the fruity pebbles of the woods so this here is lamb's quarters hey Carrie yeah, I'm doing fine hey <laughs> oh my gosh people are actually joining the stream <laughs> this is awesome um, so yeah I hope you're doing well in Michigan and Aw, <laughs> Jasmine and Gary, hope you're doing well and I'm assuming you're still in Wisconsin. Um, so here we have lamb's quarters. It's growing right next to this tiny little kale plant. Oh, the nightshades have always scared you? Yeah, there is like so much misinformation about them, but just, and there is like some caution around eating the greens, but the berries I think are totally fine for beginners to eat and it's pretty easy to tell apart from the poisonous look-alike which is belladonna so i recommend yeah looking online or if you have sam thayer's books those are super good i can't remember which one of his books nightshade is in he has three books but he like gets in really depth 
into the history of nightshade and its use across the world as both a cooked green and as a fruit. So anyway, this here is lamb's quarters and this is like basically the perfect stage for eating it. You can see these leaves. We've got some leaf miner damage here, but it's not too bad. But you can see these leaves are like light green and you might be able to tell that they're like pretty tender, like they're floppy. Um, and if you look on the underside, it has this like kind of powdery white coating. Hi, Emily Ann. Hope you're doing good. I'm just out here at a community garden I help manage and I'm pointing out some common weeds. And this here is lamb's quarters. So yeah, there's this like kind of whitish coating on the underside. It's more prominent on the new growth. So if you like look at the very tip here, you can see how white that is. And it's kind of mealy, like it kind of comes off on your hands. I don't know if you can see that, but it feels like mealy. Um, yeah, have people been foraging anything? You have been getting out to the woods or your backyards or wherever you like to go? Been morale season here so I know people have been looking for those. I haven't gotten out to the woods in a while but I have been picking plenty of weeds from around the city so <laughs> uh, yeah so lamb's quarters you can just eat like spinach and usually I just like pick off the very top of it or I'll pick off some of the leaves toward the top. The newer growth is going to be toward the top so that's what's going to be more tender and more tasty. And you can just eat it like spinach. You can eat it raw on a salad or you can cook it. Uh, fiddleheads, dandelion greens and flowers, morels. Ooh, morels, I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't had any fiddleheads either, but lots of dandelion greens. Ooh, lamb's quarters and nettles. Purslane, I haven't seen any purslane yet, which is a little surprising because it usually comes up really fast in this, um, community garden here but I'm sure it'll be up later in the year. Do people have any things they like doing with lamb's quarters? I've made like a artichoke spinach dip with it before that was I think really tasty. I think like basically you can use it just like spinach and it's really good that way. Um, so yeah you can see a lot of like dandelions growing directly out of the soil here. I was saying earlier that when you're harvesting in the city, well really anywhere, but especially in the city, you do want to be careful about where you're picking. And I was saying community gardens are a good place to go because the soil should be tested and should be safe. So over here, we have all these raised beds because the soil is actually contaminated. So I wouldn't eat any of the dandelions or greens or roots coming directly out of the soil but there's plenty of things that grow in the raised beds so so yeah I like I like dandelion personally it's pretty bitter yeah Parker's eating some dandies nettles lambs quarters yeah those are all delicious all very rich in vitamins and minerals it's kind of funny like growing stuff in a garden and then just having like weeds come up that are actually far more nutritious than the things you're growing so <laughs> it's a little funny uh, I wanted to show off this little plant here does anybody recognize this I know there's a bit of a lag so I'll give you a minute but it's not the same as this plant here. That's like a little bit in the shade. Let me see if I can find a better example. So like this and this are different. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but if you look at the leaves, you can see these are heart shaped, whereas these leaves also grow in groups of three, but they're more of an oval or diamond shape. 
So yeah, these leaves are, it's called palmate leaf compound when all the leaves come out from one single point. It's kind of hard to see because they're so folded in, but there are three leaves, three leaves in each group. Uh, wood sorrel, and then Carrie's raising her hand. Oh, do you want to plant walk with me? Yeah, I miss you guys too. And I haven't been traditional ways in so long and it's a bummer and it looks like it's probably not happening this year. So very sad, but uh, but yeah, Parker, it's wood sorrel, so. And so good job knowing what it is. Have you guys eaten this before? It's like super tasty, lemony. Uh, the lemon flavor comes from a compound called oxalic acid, which um, sometimes gets a bad rap because it binds with minerals and vitamins in your gut. So like iron and calcium, I know it does, and it makes it inaccessible to you. But as long as you're not critically ill or something, it should be fine. Um, and cooking the plant does get rid of the oxalic acid, so it shouldn't be that much of a concern. And it's also in a lot of different um, domesticated plants, so like spinach has it and Swiss chard and um, I don't know, a lot of different things. So it's not a huge concern. But I think that was the main stuff I wanted to show you. Oh, I wanted to show you this tree too. This is a hackberry. I'm getting closer so I can show you the leaves and the berries. So these berries are nowhere near ripe. They won't be ripe until probably August or maybe even September. But they start out this green color and then when they're ripe they'll turn kind of a purplish brown. And just some identifying features of hackberry. First of all, the bark is like super quirky. You can kind of remember hackberry because the bark looks like it's been hacked up. And then if you look at the leaves, the leaves are heart shaped and the base is asymmetrical. So you can see that this part of the leaf is higher than the other part here. And actually, like, hackberry leaves often have these galls on them, so G-A-L-L-S. It's caused by a, a bug laying eggs in there. So you can actually use this as an identification feature too because it's just, like, so common. But yeah, you want to eat these later in the year, like August, as I said, and you, when you eat them, you crunch through the uh, shell and that actually has, like it's really rich in fat and protein and vitamins and minerals and it's super nutritive. And it's something that's been found in uh, pa Paleolithic caves. So it's got a long, long history of being eaten by humans. So if you wanna, you know, reconnect with your primal self and eat some like real Paleolithic food, this is a place to go. <laughs> Uh, and they're super common. They're, they grow in woods. They're native to this area, but they're super commonly planted in yards and parks and places like that. So they're pretty easy to find. And the berries will actually hang on the tree for a long time. So when they ripen in late summer, they'll often hang on the tree through the winter. So it's like a great food source through the coming months. Um, yeah. Any questions? I just wanted to do this as like kind of a quick test and to try it out because I've never done it before. So hope that you learned a couple things maybe or just had fun hanging out. <laughs> hey Anne-Marie. I'm actually just about to end the stream but thanks for joining me and chatting. And yeah, I hope to do more of these in the future. I'm exploring different ways to do classes online and to offer, yeah, to offer more educational opportunities without meeting in person. Um, 
since I'm still concerned about COVID and all of that. So uh, I don't want to keep myself safe and keep everyone else safe. Thanks, Jasmine. It's good to uh, virtually see you. <laughs> Say hi to everyone up at Wagbo for me. Say hi to Richard. Thanks, Parker. Good to see you. Have a good afternoon, everyone. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday. Bye.